the doyen of the opposition in Uganda, Dr. Kiza Besije, is back home. He returned at Entebbe International Airport in a dramatic fashion because he was picked by the police, first by the CEA aviation vehicle, and then by the police patrol that drove him through many routes back to his home here in Kasangati. Dr. Besije continues to face many charges, including that of treason for having sworn him himself as president. And now we have Dr. Besija at his home here in Kasangati. We could not have him at our studios because he's not allowed now to leave his home, even though he's returned to his home country. Dr. Besija is my guest tonight. Good evening, sir, and welcome to the show. Good evening, Patrick, and uh, glad always to be on your show. And a very good evening to all the NTV uh, viewers and listeners, wherever they may be joining us from. You have been away for a month or so, and you returned at Entebbe International Airport in what I've called a dramatic fashion, and you could, they, could, they could not bear, even allow you to touch down on the tarmac. Did you prepare yourself for this? Well, frankly, I am always prepared for anything because uh, in my years as uh, an opposition leader in Uganda and also having seen what goes on in the rest of Africa for those who seek to challenge uh, the dictatorships around the continent, one cannot be unprepared for anything. You have to prepare for all kinds of situations. And uh, so I was not entirely, uh, you know, taken um, back or completely surprised by what I saw, though uh, it was quite obviously, um, you know, unpleasant. Yeah, but did you prepare for the exact stuff that happened to you, because if you did, the FDC leadership that was here, in fact, and the people who were waiting for you, what they thought in their mind, and I thought that was in sync with you, was to receive you at Entebbe, you come to the Nigerian Kumbi head office, and you wave to the people, and, and, and the people actually were there, but you, you knew in your mind that this was not likely to happen. Well, you see, uh, of course, that's what uh, I expected that would happen. You know, that uh, what was being prepared is what would uh, take place. But as I have said, uh, in our situation, we expect that all kinds of uh, situations can develop along the way. In fact, uh, even before I left the UK, I had been told that the police had been planning to pick me from the tarmac with a helicopter and to drop me in Kasangati. Uh, it seems along the way they changed that plan and now chose to uh, bring me by vehicle the way they did. So yes, I, our plans, what we prepared for was uh, communicated to the country, which was just to come the ordinary way people come in the country, pass through immigration, collect your luggage, uh, get out of the airport, be received by people who are waiting for you at the reception of the airport, and uh, drive to the program you've just talked about, which was communicated to the country. But it was not that we did not know we are dealing with uh, the regime we are dealing with. We knew exactly the regime we are dealing with and that uh, all kinds of situations could develop along the way. You know, there's a saying, Dr. Besiji, that home sweet home and and for you when you returned and where you are now really is it home sweet home yes it is home sweet home because otherwise i wouldn't be returning i wouldn't be returning to a country where i am charged with a case if convicted uh, would lead me to be hanged but what is happening around you is bitter <laughs> yes, it's not sweet no, yeah, it is bitter, but what I'm saying is the fact that even in spite of all that, I am determined to come back shows you how sweet home must be. 
because one could stay anywhere else, but there is no place you will find anywhere in the world that offers you the kind of comfort and rights like those you have as a citizen of your own motherland. And this is why, uh, frankly, I'm willing to uh, do anything, to suffer anything, so that I enjoy those God-given rights. But now your home has been turned into a dungeon of sorts because to come here, we had to go th to ask for permission and then a spike is removed off the road and, and your home is surrounded by heavily armed guards and that takes away your right. That does not look like home sweet home. For a person, you are in the UK, you are in the US, USA, you are roaming about, but when you come in Kampala, you can't have a town walk about. Absolutely, but that is precisely the reason that uh, we must uh, challenge this kind of situation and make sure that we have a country where all citizens are ruled according to the rule of law because what they are doing is clearly illegal. This is not a place of detention gazetted in our country. They are not allowed to detain people in their homes. What they are doing is clearly illegal. They are doing it with impunity. So we are not under the rule of law. Now, we can never enjoy, and this is not just for me, this is for every citizen who will do what I am doing, seek to enjoy all their rights, including the right to offer leadership in the country. Anybody who seeks to challenge Mr. Museveni or any dictator around the world, this is how dictators behave because they consider themselves as owners of their countries. In fact, that's the reason I am charged with the treason because they, you know, challenging Museveni is challenging Uganda. He's just, he considers himself as the country, as the embodiment of our country. But Dr. Besiji, you, you, you have challenged the regime. You have called it an illegitimate kind of regime. And you went to UK and you went to the United States. I mean, you know, months have gone since the election or almost is about even to make a year. And, and, and you're calling your defiance campaign. But he continues to act as president, you know, receive heads of state, uh, institutions of government are working. And, and, and does, doesn't that really show that the defiance campaign is losing steam and has no meaning? No, you see, it doesn't. First of all, please understand, uh, Patrick, that uh, freedom in this country has been fought for, not for the first time. And it has taken time to cause changes. This is possibly the second time that we are using defiance to regain our power as citizens. Don't forget, this is the Independence Week. On October 9th, 1962, we did not get independence because the British wanted us to be independent. We became independent because the citizens of Uganda defied the British. And in Uganda, different from other countries like our neighbors in Kenya who took up guns, in Uganda, citizens actually defied the colonial rule and the British were smart, I must credit them, because they realized that they could not win against a population that was disobeying them that was saying, you cannot be our leaders. But it did not happen overnight. It took some time until the British appreciated that they were fighting a losing battle. And so they accepted to grant independence. That was winning independence by defiance. They had us for about 70 years or more. Yes, so but, but, you are ready to go all but this. eventually, you are in this for a long haul. Eventually, war. citizens won their independence through defiance, not through nonviolent struggle. We didn't engage through, through in, in, in war. Now, Mr. Museveni won his power through violence, but he did not win that struggle of violence in one day. It took five years. It led to half a million people dead 
He's standing on half a dead, half a million dead people on his presidency seat. Yeah, don't forget you accompanied him to that victory. Yes, and his seat is sitting on half a million dead citizens. He's, if he's culpable, you are culpable too on that journey. Yes, I have no problem we can discuss about that. But the point I am saying is that freedom is earned. It's not given. It has a cost. It takes time. It takes struggle. What, we, what you only have to choose is the method of struggle. Do you earn it through violence? You can struggle using violent means, like Mr. Museven tried to do. Or do you gain your freedom through non-violent struggle? What we are engaging in now is non-violent struggle. But it's a very potent means of struggle. Don't, 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 don't make any mistake about it. You are describing what is happening here in my home. Hundreds of policemen guarding an unarmed, uh, law-abiding citizen not to get out of his house. Why? Because it means that that whole police force, the person you are saying is enjoying uh, power and having institutions that are functioning and so on, it means that they have no confidence that they can deal with one person walking freely on the street. That is not a, that is not a government that has power. You know, that is a government that is losing power or that has lost power and is hanging on by the teeth of their violence. But that teeth of the violence lasts a very, very short time. Just like you will see this one go. You know, sometimes, and, and this is the, 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 the unfortunate part of it, sometimes our people think that because you have not achieved what you say you are going to achieve today, that therefore you have failed. No. And, uh, uh, you know, non-violent struggle like we are engaged in, where citizens because what is happening here is not happening because of me. It is simply happening because the citizens of this country are rebelling, are disobeying <clears throat> Mr. Museven. You say they have beaten them, as you have seen on the streets, clobbered them, uh, destroyed their property. You've seen people's border borders taken, they are full on all these police stations and so on. But every day I get out, they come. <laughs> That is defiance. They are defying the regime. And there is no way any regime anywhere can function once people say, we no longer support you. So we the, shall two, not cooperate the two individuals, you. President Museveni and Dr. Kiza Besije, you are the helm of the politics of Uganda. He's a veteran president, you're a veteran opposition leader. And, and probably now, don't we need like some other other people, not you? Because the two of you really probably are not giving us the best. You are not, you, you, you have punched probably above your weight and that's, you can stop at a certain point. And, and, and the NRM government in, some, in terms of service delivery, delivering the people, they also have their limitations. So you, the well, two you, individuals no, seem you, to have no, you understand. let down. Please understand what is happening. What is happening is not a struggle for leadership. It's a liberation struggle. In other words, there is somebody who has usurped power of the people, because remember the constitution says that all power belongs to the people. But that is not what is here. You very well know, Patrick, like all other Ugandans know, that uh, uh, Mr. Museveni is not there by the will of the people. He even never became a president through an election. And, uh, uh, you know, if it was just the will of the people, uh, he would not be scared of an, an, an unarmed person moving around his country like I, like, I, like, I, like I do. You saw them yesterday saying, we cannot allow you into the city. You know, now they cannot allow me out of my house. So, uh, this is not because I am the problem. This is because they are fearing the population out there. 
but that population will still do what they need to do whether I am there or not, whether I am dead or not. I've told you that the people who struggled for independence, you know, did so. Some were arrested, some were killed, some, but independence <coughs> came. So, uh, the, the people who struggled for independence in Africa were ready to use other, all other means, non-violence and violence. And when you were in London, Dr. Besuji, you said the regime in Kampala is using a barrel of the gun to stay in power. And, and if that is what it is using, well, it has entrenched it for the, for the last 30 years and they seem to be moving on. Is that, are you likely to change the tactics? Because the tactics are not, are not giving you the desired results that no, you fortunately, need. No, fortunately, you see, for me, I am uh, at an advantage, at a vantage point because I have been part of those who used violence and I have seen the outcome of violence. And so when I talk about using non-violence, I am talking, unless you say there is a third route, violence, non-violence, and some other thing which I haven't tested. But we have tested non-violence, it has succeeded. We have tested violence, it has succeeded in removing a regime, but it has not succeeded in re 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 uh, returning power to the people. The power remains with those with guns. So I, and I want you to understand that I am not the protagonist here. It is not Museveni versus Besji. Never. It is Museveni versus the people of Uganda who want their freedom, who want their power, who want their resources, this money they are stealing left and right to use it equitably uh, for their own welfare. And, uh, and development. So it's not a struggle about Besige, and Besige can collapse today and die, and they can shoot him outside this gate, but that struggle will continue. Make no mistake at all, this has nothing to do with Besige. I have said many times before that if I chose today to say, uh, you know, I am no longer struggling for the realization of our rights as a people, our freedoms as a people, to end this impunity that you see, to end the corruption where people just take public resources with impunity and leave people starving and wallowing in poverty and without medicine and without education, without uh, infrastructure. Uh, if I chose to join the few, for example, and say, like you have seen, you know, you've seen uh, some of our colleagues join, say, no, now we realize we can maybe uh, change the movement from inside, let's go there and argue on a better course of action. I would get out of the road and nobody would be caring who I am. Because you know, people are not interested in me. They are interested in their struggle to regain their country, to benefit from their country. But look, some of uh, prominent opposition leaders who have worked with you before and others from different parties uh, have joined the, the, the NRM. And, 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 and slowly they seem to be taking away from you very prominent people who also have followers. And, 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 and consequently that will affect your party and will affect you as a leader. Possibly. Because if you cannot even retain and hold on with your people, who are supposed to be the foot soldiers that go on and talk on your word, take on your word, yes. then where, how are you going to, to The move? people we are talking about, as I have said, are not ourselves the leaders. They are those, in fact, yesterday, the policeman who was responsible for arresting me and bringing me here, I came telling him in the vehicle, that he should not pay attention to me. He should pay attention to the words that are being told to him by the people he is guarding me not to interact with. Because people speak. You, when you are uh, following what is going on, on Kaleirwe, Mulago, uh, there at the clock tower, whoever, hear what the, that public is saying. 
we are dying continue you are our hope we, we, we you know we, we are hungry we are, we are being finished by these thieves no 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 they are, they are, they are telling what they are and and he said uh, that they, they are they are saying that but they we are protecting those who are working those have no jobs and they want to destroy the property of those who are working so you must understand that this struggle has beneficiaries and victims and what does officer kahebo tell you yes so he says that they are protecting those they if i go to town my supporters these very many people who are you know chanting that they may destroy the property of those few who are doing business and of course that is not true because i have been to town and everybody kasita itself the traders have also uh, gone on defiance campaigns before against the regime so that is not even true but even if it was true you see that is the crux of the struggle is our country protecting a few to the expense at the expense of the rest of the country and if that is the case is that sustainable because that is exactly what uh, is happening here we have a country that works for and protects very few people mr museven and his henchmen some of their cronies who are uh, whom they give business and who are amassing the money using the corrupt means of their of those few leaders they cooperate with you know while the rest of the country is starving is uh, has no medical care has no uh, education to talk of has no infrastructure to talk of that is the crux of the matter so it's it's a question of where you stand do you stand with these few property advantaged uh, people who are enjoying themselves and ostensibly being protected from the rest of the population or do you stand with the population it's a choice we're going to take a break and when we come back we'll drill deep into that issue and also we'll be asking about the independence day celebrations uganda makes 54 years as an independent and sovereign state in, on December, on october 9th and i understand you'll be having uh, separate uh, independence celebrations we'll be getting into that when we come back welcome back you're watching on the spot my name is patrick Kamara. we are coming to you from the home of dr kiza besje here in kasangati because dr besje could not be allowed to leave his home to come to our studios so we had to shift the studio of sorts and bring it to his home dr besje i've heard some of your leaders suggest say including yourself that you're going to have burial independence day celebrations and uh, uh, well it's going to be a joke because the whole nation is going to be loca so why what what is even the meaning of that well why first that? first of all uh you know the idea of a celebration itself is really misnomerous it's a wrong uh, name for what is going to happen because again there will be maybe a few who are celebrating, who are uh, enjoying what is going on, who are happy, who are uh, being served by the state. Uh, but the rest of the country cannot be celebrating, cannot be happy. Those that are dying of hunger, can you imagine? people dying of hunger actually in Uganda the power of Africa which has the most endowed kind of uh, you know resources and, and resource endowment people dying of hunger so have the people <coughs> the, the, of the, hunger the, been the millions to, the millions that the, the arable land they have the, 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 energy the, 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 the millions it, well, it means that the country is not working for them the millions that because it's not just uh, it's not as simple as those uh, people uh, not working don't forget indeed some are actually landless in this country today 
because either their land has been grabbed or they have been displaced or they are, they are people who, can, who can simply cannot produce even if they wanted to. There are, uh, you know, millions who cannot uh, uh, produce uh, in, a, in a way that is uh, sustaining them. With all respect, Dr. Besije, don't you reach a point where you feel you have spoken every word you want to speak against this government? You have pointed out that all the inefficiencies, the lack of service delivery, almost every subcount, every village in this country has heard your voice. But somehow this regime continues. Yes, I mean, yes, you see. If you continue same, saying the same words, you, you see, have said them now almost 15, 20 years, and they have not given you the results. You see, SJ, it's time you did something else. You see, again, uh, it's not what will change the country is not just the talking. It is the actions of people. And actions of people arise out of hearing, understanding, and uh, getting committed to what you are saying. Uh, don't forget, you know, Uganda is a religious country. Uh, it's, we talk about for God and my country. That's our national motto. But the Christians preach every day. Jesus was here more than 2,000 years ago. They have not stopped preaching. And unless you say that they are wasting time because they are repeating the same words in the Bible, <laughs> you know, you, you, you'll be making the same kind of uh, uh, statement to me who is actually not even saying the same kind of words because situations change every day. But I see people repenting. I see people exercising demons. I see people you know, going on the pulpit uh, and, then, and saying we have changed. But for Ab your case, absolutely. the message seems not to be turning people. Absolutely. If it was not turning people, I would not be a problem at all. I wouldn't be a problem. I wouldn't be of any consequence at all. I would be in your studio talking freely because it, my words would have no effect uh, and my actions would have no effect. So what is going on, I think, is the best evidence that what we are doing is efficacious, that it, it has impact. If you fear a person coming into your country with all your military, police, what, you cannot even allow somebody to walk from the airport through the immigration and come into the country. And if he commits an offense, you arrest him. <laughs> if, you, if you cannot do that, and you think, you know, you must lift somebody from the doors of the airplane, and you say that what I am doing has no effect, then quite obviously the yardstick on which we judge the effect must be different. But let me say this, you know, that uh, the struggle is on between the people of Uganda and the dictatorship in Uganda. Between the people of Africa, actually, it's wider. Because you see what is happening here is not strange. Africa was dominated, the whole of it, using violence, using force. Now, I told you the colonialists were smart when they realized that people had stopped cooperating with them. They knew they could not retain power. So they changed the tactics and gave the guns to these Nyamparas, the, 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 the uh, people to supervise uh, and use the same uh, violence to control these people. And for a time, yes, there was an euphoria, people believing that they had actually won independence, not knowing that, uh, you know, those uh, who had assumed power in similar skin color as theirs from the same villages as theirs, we are going to turn on them and make it an even bigger nightmare. Let me, let me, let me. So this is an African 
uh, you know, it, 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 it's it's an it's it's an African uh, problem, and what we are doing here is quite obviously going being done or going to be done by all Africans to regain influence and control of their countries. And um, uh, I have pointed out to you that struggles take time. We have taken a very short time. For those uh, who have listened to you for many years, Dr. Besije, the most message you, you have hammered home was that the regime must go, Mr. Museveni must go, we should go. And they, they're beginning to realize that you're more, with all respect, fixated at the removal of President Museveni no, no, as opposed to no. the policy alternative and the things that you can do for him. No, in fact, to the, contra the total contrary. I have over and over again said that, for example, the reason we don't want to use violence is because we don't just want to remove a regime. We want to remove a system of dictatorship. It's not just a, about a regime. If you want to remove Mr. Museveni, you can even waylay him and shoot him. Some people have attempted that, assassinations. They want to solve the problem. The problem is that people must gain power. In order for people to gain power, first of all, they must gain the knowledge and understanding of what it means to have power and to use it for their benefit. You know, when you brand him as a dictator, Dr. Besije, there are yes. people who will shed a light into your own leadership hmm. when you are head of, uh, of the FDC. And they yeah. look back and, and ask, where are the other doings of opposition that used to be with you and no longer around you? I can give you examples of people who used to sound high rec name recognition, people like uh, the Honorable Manya Mushega, people like the Honorable Gaston Zindana, people like uh, Justin Sabiti, people like uh, uh, Musinguzi Garuga, people like Betty Kamia. There's some, they say there's something about you that all those leaders, they seem to be going away because you also, your leadership is in question. No, well, but you see, first of all, certainly nobody can accuse me of using coercion. I have no means of coercing anybody. I have no guns, I have no police, I have no prisons, I have no... Nobody can accuse me of using force to remain, to become a leader. Nobody can accuse me of using money, patronage, to give people, uh, you know, uh, privileges and uh, give people uh, things in order to support me. I don't have the money. Certainly I don't have state money. They, that, uh, that dictators use controlling public resources and using those public resources to rent support. So I cannot rent support. Therefore, if I have any leadership role, it cannot be because of what I am using uh, and duly to get that leadership role. Beyond that, I have uh, relinquished my leadership in the party, as you know. I have a new party leader whom I respect, Major General Mugisha Mundu, he's our party leader. I don't actually sit on any organ of our party, as you know. I'm not a member of the National Executive, I'm not a member of the National Council, I'm not a member. So if there are people who are not active in FDC, it could not be because of me. What I have been contesting, however, is uh, that we are in a multi-party dispensation. Because you cannot have a functioning multi-party dispensation under a dictatorship where rights are not available. So yes, there is some space for organizing some kind of things that are called parties, but they cannot function as parties in a multi-party political system. And, and therefore, yes, there are some people who want to misdirect our struggle as if we are in a multi-party dispensation uh, and uh, there is competition between NRM and FDC. That is not the case. We are in a liberation process. In this liberation process, 
all people who want freedom must come together, regardless of their political parties. I have said this over and over again. It's not, and I, I have said that even if we are going to get freedom through an electoral kind of process, it must be a process through which we actually engage in defiance. It cannot be an electoral process where the dictator organizes the election, provides all the, 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 the arrangements for the elections, uh, announces himself as the winner, and you think he renounce you instead as the winner. No. So we are in a liberation process. Now, liberation processes have risks. That's why I believe not many people are willing or anxious to do what I do. But I'm not stopping anybody from doing it. It's World not an Bank enjoyable Bank place. It's not an, it's, not an, it's not an enjoyable place Uganda, to be. Dr. Besje, uh, shows that poverty levels have gone down. And it's, again, you can see that the economy, you know, you know, you know figures you, you know, show they have you, gone up. You know, People, you know, uh, are you in, you know, it's sad that our countries get hoodwinked by some of these institutions. Do you know what they call poverty levels going down? It is those who survive on, who, who, they call those, the poverty level, the, the poor, those who survive on less than one dollar. Less than one dollar a day. A dollar is 3,000 shillings. So they say those who are getting more than who are surviving on more than 3,000 shillings are, are, are below the poverty, are above the poverty line. Nonsense. 3,000 shillings? Have you been hearing the debate in, Euro, in Europe over the minimum wage? There is a raging debate now even in the UK where I was. But, but, but there's a point. The minimum, has come from Dr. the minimum wage. There's a, there's a point. Let me, tell, found this let, country let me tell you. Yes. They use it as a line of argument no. and it's credible. Let me tell you, let me tell you, it's, the, it's, the, it's a point that is established by those same uh, fellows. Let me tell you, the minimum wage they are fighting over now in the UK is for a person, the one whom they say earns the minimum for survival is 12 pounds. Some are saying it should be 10, others 12 per hour. 10 pounds per hour. A pound here is over five, I think about 5,000 shillings. So per hour, 50,000 shillings per hour, minimum wage. You are talking about your own citizens being got out of poverty who use 3,000 shillings a day. <laughs> These ones are fighting for 50,000 shillings an hour. What, I mean, the, this is nonsense. The whole country is full of just uh, stinking poor people. You know, 75% of Ugandans earn less than $3 a day. Less than three, less than, less than, less than, less than three. Giving you support. So these Ugandans, it's uh, all the starting point is for them to realize that all this will not change as long as they are still held captive. Because what is really happening is that they are captive. They are slaves. They are enslaved. In fact, now it's just a modern day slavery that must be uh, again uh, clearly uh, concept. I, I think the, our you know, uh, social scientists must crystallize the uh, the concepts that are going on today. These people you hear, they are being taken for labor, recruited and taken as laborers to the Arab countries. Have you listened to the uh, voices of those women who are crying from the Arab countries where they have been taken as workers, Ugandan women? You know, if you listen to their voices, you cry. You know, so this slavery will not end without the participation, without the engagement of those people that are enslaved themselves fighting for their own liberation. But also there are quite a number of people so, who are so, making so, money so, in the Middle East. 
yes. quite a number. Yes. So, and you, quite so, all other villages around Uganda, if you went to, uh, in Lira, somewhere in Muchwini, or even you went to, in your village in Wakavengo, or mine in Ngezi, in Kenjuju, there are people who are still moving about and enjoying their freedom, and they are okay. They are not. They are. You see, part of the poverty that we are talking about, which is exactly what we are trying to deal with, is that of poverty of knowledge, ignorance. Part of what enslaves us is ignorance. You know, the, the people you are talking that they are okay, even you who is here in town, if you got a medical emergency to just now, where would you be taken? To that Mulago? Where would you go, Patrick, if you had a medical emergency? Would you survive? Do you know how many women are dying in childbirth from those villages? But they simply, and our work is to awaken them, to say these 19 women we are burying every day should not have died. But when somebody is not even aware, the wife dies, he says, well, that's what God willed. Uh, they go to the banana plantation and sing. So you, you seem to want to give them you know, some kind of positive anger for them to realize that things are bad and they, and they get angry for positive reasons. No, no, no. But it's they, not, they never get It's angry. not. Well, they do. And that is, you see, if they were not, I would not be where I am. I would not be restricted. I would not be uh, harassed in any way. The reason all this is going on is the very demonstration that uh, people have woken up. You know, if you realized in the last election, you know, and these are very poor people, not only in the last election, every day, including yesterday when I was going to town. Why do you think those poor people whom they tell this message is, I don't know this and that and that, all the propaganda of the, you know, a dictatorship thrives on four things. Terror, to cause people to fear. Money, to bribe people, like you've seen Mr. Museven after the election, give, handing out checks. Uh, people organize themselves, he gives them a hundred million, a hundred million, you know, the, the, the bribing. Uh, number three uh, the, the, is to uh, use propaganda, you know, to use the machine. All these people you see paid on TVs, there are some respectable people even, you see sheikhs on TV every day, you know, saying Bessie is bad, you know, Seven is good, and this is why he's good. Uh, but when I go out, those people you see on Karel, where all over the town, coming out with 100 shillings to give me. Why? Why do they do it? When they are that poor, they have woken up. They realize that we are uh, guiding a process that will empower them even more, that will liberate them. What, what, and this is what is frightening uh, the regime. The regime is in total terror, so, state of terror. Uh, you see, uh, when Kony was fighting, he had many guns, he had many soldiers, he had all this, but had you ever seen, you know, armored vehicles all over the city thinking that Kony is about to come <laughs> to come to Kampala? Why are those armored vehicles uh, you see all over the town? The deployment. Because of you. Yes, but, you know, one person cannot be the problem. So, they, they know the people are waking up very quickly. But, okay, you and, are you uh, and, an and, and opposition leader. You are a former freedom fighter in the army that brought President Museven to power. At the no, I'm not, the a, I'm not a former. I am a freedom, fighter, a freedom fighter even now. It's the a, type a, of fighting a retired that... It's a, a, a retired colonel in the UPDF. Yes. Former NRA. Really, when, and you understand military intelligence, I suppose, when they put all these restrictions, and you know because you know they are game, what is it that you have up your sleeve that is making them get scared? No, it is. There is something you have. <laughs> what is it? It is these words. That's what Beyond is. Beyond the words, what is it? No, what nothing. It? Nothing. It's the words that make them scared. The words and also the words of the people, which I told you. You know, those people who are standing by the roadsides are saying certain words. Mr. Museven knows that, uh, you know, he has millions of young people who have no jobs. 
and who are not hoping to get jobs because of the system of the regime he has instituted in this country. A regime that serves a few. A regime of which is now a captive also. He cannot break out because those vested interests around him cannot allow him. You know? So, uh, the, the, this is what uh, terrifies them. Knowing that they are likely to go the way they are. So, they are, they are trying to delay the inevitable. <laughs> the inevitable is that we must have a transition. And, you know, I, I still trust that Mr. Museveni has some capacity of perception, of trends. And if my suspicion is correct, uh, I think he needs to lock himself up and reflect even harder on how to get out of the encirclement. Because he's the one actually, he's, these hundreds of soldiers or policemen who are here uh, are not uh, besieging me because they themselves are besieged by the population which they are fearing, the population they fear me to go to. So the regime is under siege. This is interesting. So it is President Museveni and, 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 and the military and the police that are, are in South. Yes, they are, they are besieged by the population. <clears throat> and uh, the way that siege ends is a matter that will be critically important for the country. Okay, very lastly, because I've asked this before to you, for the video that went viral with you swearing in, really, it was on the borderline to comedy. What was it all about? Well, uh, first of all, as you know, that is a b the subject of uh, a treason case. A treason case that is still uh, ongoing. Uh, to that extent, of course, I'm not at liberty to discuss what is before court. Uh, but I have said in unequivocal terms that we truly believe we won the elections. We have evidence of winning that election. We are willing to put our evidence on the table and to get whoever wants to challenge the evidence, we have to put theirs on the table before uh, an audit, an international, an, an independent audit, which would not be the first to be conducted in that kind of way in the world, and we would show that indeed we won the election. Thank you, Dr. Besige. What is going to be your parting shot tonight? Well, simply to say that um, uh, Ugandans must stay, at the, stay the course. This is no time to waver. This is no time to doubt ourselves that we can have the country we want. Certainly, I will never <clears throat> retreat in the struggle for a free, independent, equitable Uganda, where all of us enjoy the, uh, the, the, the riches the country provides, the opportunities our country provides equitably. Dr. Besiji, thank you very much for being on our show. My pleasure. You have heard him there, retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besiji. He's saying he's not going to retreat, he's not going to surrender, staying on the trenches fighting for freedom, and it appears every time he gets out of his house, as if he has a magnet of people, a trick, people come around him. Whether that's going to stop or continue moving, we just have to keep watching the situation. But we have two options as a country, to build this nation or to destroy this nation. But you know what? Let us choose to build Uganda. Good night and God bless Uganda.